Hello, hackers. How are you? Are you making fun or not? Well, thank you for being here in, in this talk. I don't know if you can see the slides, please. OK. <clears throat> well, thank you for being in this session. We are going to talk about Open Gateway, which is a project of the, of the telco industry. But before that, I would like to introduce myself, because I'm, I'm not coming from the telco industry. I'm, I'm a computer science. I've been doing my whole career based on hacking techniques. So I've been doing hacking all the, all the time. I did my PhD in hacking techniques. I started in the, in the university. I'm the one on the, on the left, on the left, in this side. Then I started to do hacking techniques and delivering conference in like Defcon, Black Hat, more than 10 years. And at some time, when I started to, to be worldwide talking about technology, one day I meet one of the top executives of Telefonica. And he told me, I want you to join Telefonica. I said, you don't have enough money to hire me. And in reality, they have. And they bought my company. So I joined Telefonica in 2012. So I started to work in, in the field that I really love, which is cybersecurity and hacking technique. I ran my own company inside of Telefonica. It was called 11 Paths. And after that, in 2016, I became the chief data officer, and in 2019, the chief digital officer. And one, one important moment in my life was when I joined Telefonica in 2012. I just did my PhD. I was running my own company for more than a decade, delivering a lot of projects, etc. And the first thing that I needed to do was visiting the chief technology officer of Telefonica, which is that guy, which is Enrique Blanco. <clears throat> and I joined Telefonica <coughs> trying to change the way we were creating technology. Because it's very different at Telco than a digital company. So I start to say, hey, Enrique, we need to do things different in a hacker way. We need to do things quick and dirty, test and fail. We need to change the way we are creating products and services, etc." And he said, OK, <clears throat> you are right now in Telefonica. This is a telco. We deploy networks. And when you want to deploy networks, you need to go to the public administration, ask for permission, open the street, deploy the tube, put the fiber, close the street. We cannot deploy patches. We do public infrastructure. So the next 10 years, you're going to be an internship. And I said, OK, no problem. I'm going to, to be an internship. So reality is that after 10 years, I'm, you know, 13 years right now, <coughs> we have started a project together, which is <coughs> for us, <coughs> sorry, which is for us a big change in our industry. Because it's not only a, a, a Telefonica project. This project has the idea of changing the way we are providing services to our customers. This is how we say Telefonica since 2016, which is quite simple. <clears throat> the idea is that we needed to move from a network, uh, an, a network infrastructure to a digital platform to allow developers to create things on top of us. So we have started to create a cloud base on top of Telefonica that we call Kernel. It's 100% cloud. It's everything based in platform as a service. And today, if the cloud goes down, all the digital services that we are providing to our customer in Hispan America, in Brazil, in Germany, and in Spain, goes down. So we have a lot of mechanisms to fail safe, backup, uh, infrastructure, etc. But everything is, is cloud-based. And the idea is that <clears throat> we wanted to be able, as a multinational, to create one product one product once and deploy as many times as we need it in different languages, in different countries, etc. So we did two things that for us was the most relevant. First one, we standardized the data. We standardized the data that we have from our customer, our services in one data set, which is huge and it was painful and it was a nightmare at the beginning. It took more than five years to have a useful 
data set that we could use for all our digital services. And the second one is that we standardize the APIs to access the network and telco capabilities. It means that for the digital products that we were putting on top of the, of the, uh, of the operation, all of them could use exactly the same API and the same data set, and it will work in every country. So it worked very well in, in Telefonica, and we integrated a lot of digital services. Today we have a, a big portfolio, and we integrated, of course, with big OTTs that are using our APIs, et cetera. And everything is cloud-based. This is, this is the one that's board. This is, in, in this case, is from Spain. This is the, the cloud infrastructure that we have on Spain. Everything is based on that. As you can see, it's elastic. It's, is based on, on Kubernetes and, and microservices, et cetera. The same in, in Germany. This is the integration of WhatsApp in Germany, number of authentication, per, per, uh, in this case, per minute, et cetera. And this is the cloud infrastructure in, in Brazil. It's just a snapshot. I took some snapshot just to, to put it on the slides. This is the one good example, because it's the number of requests along the time per digital services. It means how many API, AP calls they are asking to the platform just to provide digital services to the customer. And it means Wi-Fi, uh, TV, uh, I don't know, every service that we have today into Telefonica, which is good. This is our digital transformation path inside Telefonica. But we see that in our industry, we've been doing the things not in the right way for digital creators. And the proof of this are these two examples. Here you have two different examples about technologies that we have in our industry that are very sexy, but that is very complex to take advantage of that. The first one in which I'm, I'm riding a bike, I'm riding a bike with a VR device, and what we have in that scenario is that I have a web camera in front of me I cannot see the road. The webcam is taking the, taking the images. That images are sent in a stream to an edge computing node using 5G. In that node, the image is digitalized and it's coming back to the VR device. And I'm watching <laughs> the road with latency enough to, to be able to ride the bike. If not, I'm going to crash which is wonderful. So we are using digital webcam, VR, 5G, edge computing, and IoT, uh, IoT platform. On the right side, it's, a, it's a, um, a service that we did in Mobile World Congress 2017, 2017, six years ago. And it's a remote driving example. We are driving a car 30 kilometers ago. We are using, uh, of course, digital webcam, 5G, IoT to control, IoT platform to control the device, edge computing, network slicing, which is the capability of create a slice of the network with latency and quality guaranteed between, between two points, and fiber to the room, which is something that we are deploying right now in Spain and in Brazil, which is to the last mile of the endpoint, in this case, to the stand. Those technologies are available in, in Telefonica and in another set of telcos, but the problem is if one of you want to use it, you need to go to a salesman, have a pre-sales discussion, sign a contract. After that, we are going to, to create a ticket for the provisioning system. The provisioning people are going to call you, hey, how is it going? We have a contract, you sign it about this, da, 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 da. and two months later, more or less, you have a big contract for three years in which you need to pay a lot of money in advance for the setup, et cetera, but you have the capability. Reality is that we are far away for digital, from digital creators, which is not what the, the other industry that are having infrastructure are doing. If we compare the telco industry with the cloud providers or the mobile providers, it's completely different. They have everything available in real time, on demand, and pay per use. They don't need to talk to anyone. You want to configure per user, per session, the, the microprocessor, the memory, the, the data storage, whatever you, 
whatever piece of technology that you need from the cloud or from the mobile, you can use it in real time, on demand, and paper usage. But if you want to use our capabilities in our industry, you need to have a specific team, one specific team to do to make integration by integration with all the telco industry. It means that, for instance, if you are Google and you want to bypass Apple Pay because 30% of CAD is too much in iPhone devices and I want to use carrier billing, which is something that we have in our industry, very, very, very well used, it, especially in countries in South America and in another, yeah, in another areas, you need to have a YouTube integration team just for doing carrier billing, which is what YouTube has today. They have a YouTube integration team just for carrier billing in the telco industry. And in the end, what is happening is that we have that kind of contracts with Netflix, with YouTube, with TikTok, with Electronic Arts, with companies big enough to deal with our complexity. but not with innovators, not with digital creators, not with their startups, etc. because it's very complex to work with us. So <laughs> we have started to think about, we need to change our industry. We need to change our industry, all of us, not only Telefonica, all of us, all the telcos. So in 2022, it means last year, in Mexico in September, 35 telcos signed an MOU of, okay, let's do an open, an open project to standardize telco capabilities. Let's make sure that the APIs are working in the same way in all the telcos and make sure that those APIs are in the developer communities that exist today. It means in hyperscalers, system integrators, aggregators, etc. And let's make sure that the developer can pay per usage no matter to what telco they, uh, um, the capability is, is, is being used at that moment, and let's make sure that we are fully transparent for uh, them. So we created that project. That project is, is on the, in the internet. You can go to the GSMA and look for Camara project, and that project, Camara standard. The Camara standard is the definition of the capabilities that we are creating, and the and the APIs that we are putting available for digital creators are called Open Gateway. <clears throat> and it's focusing the future networks that we are deploying today. We are deploying low latency networks. In Europe, we estimate that it's going to be around 200 billion in investment to make sure that we have fiber to the home, fiber to the road, 5G standalone, and Wi-Fi 6 capabilities. We need to deploy computing at the border, which is something that with the new generation of artificial intelligence infused digital service is mandatory because there is not a computing capacity for all the explosion of digital services that we are seeing for the future. And that network should be programmable. One single line of code, paper use, and easy to use it. And that's the project that we are deploying, which is Open Gateway. <coughs> It's going to be available, it's already is, is, is available in the hyperscalers and in some uh, system aggregators, but it's in preview. So the idea is that you, go, you are deploying, you are creating a digital service, you need, you need one capability from the telco industry, like quality on demand, network slicing, edge computing, device location, device status, carrier billing, whatever. The API is a standard, you can use it in your code, and you can create the, uh, different services. This is the experience that we are working in, in in Azure for today. And the idea is that we are hitting all complexity for the developers and making all capabilities available in one single line of code. And the rest is up to the digital creators. You can do whatever you think that makes sense, but you can do a lot of things. For instance, for anti-fraud. If you think in the number of WhatsApp accounts that have been stolen that can be protected just using device location from the network, which is not something that a fake GPS could hide, you can reduce the fraud and you can increase safety of the and security of the user. And we are using 
that for a lot of services. For instance, right now at home in Wi-Fi, our customers can manage the quality on demand and create a specific uh, roads for video conference, for working, etc. That capability is also available in TV right now. You can manage the Wi-Fi from TV using that APIs. And we have artificial intelligence uh, algorithms to detect uh, security attacks and uh, also the necessity of, net, of traffic prioritization uh, based on video conference. You can put the video calls right now. The video calls, you can put it in, in any de device or application right now. This is something that we call meta calls. You can redirect the phone calls into an app that is working in your, in your VR device. Uh, <coughs> this is one that we love it, which is mobile boosting. The idea is that you can have in an antenna uh, a channel which is not congestion. We are providing with these, uh, with these capabilities, for instance, congestion prediction in the city antennas depending on time. It means at that time, that antenna is going to be congested because it's the rush hour and people are using that road to go back home, which is very relevant for drawing, uh, uh, drones uh, planning because if you want to have a drone beyond line of sight, you need to make sure that you have connectivity all the time so you can prepare that. Or for instance, for remote driving, because the last thing that you want to happen is that when you are driving remotely a car, that you lost connectivity. That's the last thing that you want to happen. So we are providing that information through APIs, allowing them to select the best road for the car. But in the end, it's not only about the network, which is very powerful. For us, the network is very powerful but it's about all the capabilities that we have in the industry. We are changing the way we are selling our capabilities, moving from pre-sales engineer and sales team, person to person, company to company, to a digital way of selling that capabilities. And we are standardizing capabilities for carrier billing, web threat, Web3 identity, e-commerce, for KYC, credit scoring, remote digital onboarding, etc for silent authentication, landline calls, everything that we have in, into our industry is going to be available through APIs. And the most important is that it's focusing developers, one single line of code and easy to, to manage. And that's all in time. Hope you enjoy the rest of the Web Summit. Thank you very much. <laughs>